right, I'm Sam. I'm Adam. We're talking about probably one of the worst Opeth records before Heritage. Uh, they're 2008 Eight. record Watershed. <laughs> yeah, woo, but before we before we get to that record, uh, mm. what, what, what have you been listening to? Dude, it was a good week. It was a good week. It was a great week, even. Some would say yeah, so really much music. new music came out. We got <clears throat> the Paysage de Ver Geister. I don't know how to say that word. Um, <laughs> Geister. I have Geister. No idea. It's ger- I mean, it's all German. That Geister. But um, yeah. What, what do you think of this album, Sam? I'm curious. I mean, dude, it's Paysage de Ver. Like, obviously, it's very different than Evolved and like all the demos, but. I mean, this man has, like, an almost obsessive dedication to, like, making incredibly un- <laughs> impenetrable, like, atmospheric black metal, and this record continues that trend. It's a lot more yep. direct, I guess. The so- uh, songs have, like, sort of a weird industrial influence, but I mean, it's not like it's not like our boy can do any wrong. No. I mean, I, I certainly like Evolve more, but that also is just a preference of atmosphere to pure i guess raw true black metal yeah there's um, a lot more second wave worshipy yeah this is a very um i guess classical record in that sort of aspect um i think it's, i mean i think it's pretty good i don't i don't know if it's gonna be like you know i, I this will not be in Eambald's position as it was last year which it's coming out soon Keep your keep your heads out for that uh best of <laughs> keep your eyes out for that best of the year. It's coming out soon. Um Sooner than you think. Sooner than you think. So I think it's a good record, but I don't know if it's like the end all be all record for sure. Yeah, no, I agree. It's I think it's kinda of funny. The the last track on here, um Geister, mm-hmm. spelled differently in the title. Um <laughs> Is is very similar to the uh, the ending to Shamish's most recent record. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I mean, I don't know. This is great. I like how like every track is bookended by like howling winds. Mm-hmm. It's cool. I would agree. Um, have you have you listened to that uh, the Alterage record? I have not listened to the Alterage record. I mean, it looks good. Weird Maybe album. Things. Weird album. It's a very I did not expect what I got. And what did you get? It's almost like... It's almost like post-metal that weaves through the black and death metal channels. It's almost more like... I don't even know how to describe it. The band is just so strange in their song compositions... There are random skips and, like, song ends in part of the track, and then they restart. It's a really <laughs> kind of difficult album to listen to, because <laughs> it's it's just so harrowing and completely unrelenting. I mean, the last song is 20 minutes of, of basically, like, doom metal reverb and noise, right? And then all the tracks before are, like, Despell Omega... Gore guts esque bullshit. That's just you know, going thump thump and. Hey, it has a three point five four on RYM right now. It's a, I mean, it's really good, but it is super dense and like, you can tell that these guys are like expert fucking songwriters because honestly, like, <laughs> it does flow so well, um, even as confusing and kind of. Bro, what if Alterage, but Miko Aspa sung for them? <gasps> Bro! <laughs> Jesus Christ, Miko Aspa. You don't like him. No, I mean, look, I'll def- I definitely want to listen to I, you know, I was fairly busy this week, and mm-hmm. it didn't help that we also had Big Brave in a mm-hmm. spectral lore. <laughs> speaking, speaking, of, speaking of Big Brave, Sam, what do you think of this new Big Brave? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I feel kind of like a broken record, but... It's Big Brave doing Big Brave. Like, this is sort of them that, you know, they found their formula really on a gaze among them, and this is them doing that exact same album with, like, (laughs) slightly different songs. But you know what? It's still great. 
No, like, don't get me wrong, it works, but, like, it's not even funny how similar these <laughs> albums are. Yeah, no, Like, they abating are. the inc- incarnation of matter. Like, at the end, you know, you have Robin Waddy screaming, like, wh- like, lose control or something, and yeah. it's exactly the same as, you don't have to do it! <laughs> Is a case among them, <laughs> and then "Vital" the self or the title track here is like the same song as "Sibling." <laughs> it's <laughs> like it's kind of interesting the way that they decided to approach it. But you know what? Like if I gave if I gave a case among them like a nine, like this record's also a nine because like it is just it. You know, it might not be the same thing. It, it is the same thing, but that's certainly not something that I am opposed to. Um, yeah no i mean like it helps that they know exactly what they're doing like this album just does enough things that are interesting to keep it like fresh throughout mm-hmm. like i like the acapella section um yeah. and like the set in half breed i like white why did still and all is sort of like an interlude track and like mm-hmm. of the silks really solid and so is the closer like this album's really good don't get me wrong it's just you know as we we we're we're og big brave fans <laughs> we're, we're, we go pretty far back <laughs> So Can we go back to like 2015 or something? I don't know. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it's definitely good. I just, I wish <laughs> it was a little bit different. <laughs> but I, I wish they would. I wish they would go back to longer material. To be honest, not longer material necessarily, but I, I want more. And I, I guess I've always craved more. Even, even going back to 2015, when that record was only three songs but 40 minutes. Like th- these are these are 40 minute records too. Um. I don't know. I, I I want more. I also want to see Big Brave live, but me too. You know. They literally toured with Dreadnought, bro. I, I know, I know, I I I I know, I know. Although you know what, Dreadnought's a weird band. I haven't gotten into Dreadnought. Yet. I dude, Dreadnought are great. What do you mean? I haven't fully gone. I haven't. I haven't been able to get into it. But anyway, um, the other med- other record you mentioned, uh, the new Spectral Lord that I cannot pronounce because it's a, a Greek word that I won't even try. Um, to butcher, I think it's pretty good. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I literally I listened to the first song and I was like, "This sounds exactly like Spectral Lore." And then I was like, caught up in doing like job stuff. The twenty-minute um, ambient closer, um, I don't think is necessary, and I does do think it is kind of. Um, just out of place among the like seven just walls of ten minute chaotic black metal, right? Uh, um, I am. Do, do your best, uh, a loss. It's kind. It's high, and it's and it, it is almost howly. It's like um. It's like you hear like uh super lo fi like Russian black metal bands that are just like. <laughs> And they just like kind of howl into the mic, and yeah, like the that, whistle tone. Yeah, yeah. That, that's exactly what uh, the Alos scream is. It's the same yeah, thing like, on like uh, I, Wanderers. But. I have no doubt that this album is incredible, and I'm sure I'll enjoy it very much. So I'm just like, don't get me wrong. It, I guess to some extent, it's a little annoying that that you know our boy who clearly knows how to make a good album. Like, let's be real, mm-hmm. it's just like. What if we put 30 minutes of interludes in there? Well, you know what the uh, weird thing is? Is, like, I actually, when I was do, when I was first looking at this album, I was like, wait a minute. And then I saw that there's another another album under the Spectral Lore name on Bandcamp, and I was like, Ex- excuse me? How did I not see this? And then it was Dungeons and Dungeons. Now, mind you, it's, <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty good. It's under a different name than Spectral Lore, but it is still A-Loss. Yeah, actually, I have all the Dungeon Synth Spectral Lore albums, yeah. or A-Loss albums, I guess, saved in my Spotify. They were, the, they were my introduction to his music, funnily enough. Because <laughs> there's some of the only... Some, like, for whatever yeah. reason, there's some of the only ones on Spotify. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so they put another one of those, and I thought that was kind of cool. But anyway, um, yeah, I mean, it's just... You know, like, there's a reason that these guys had the best black metal album of last year, um, and, well, arguably, I guess. Um, and With they, Mistras? Yeah. And, well, <laughs> you know what? The Mistras album is good, okay? doesn't get enough credit. It is quite good. Um, probably should have been on our Audible matches. Anyway, um, yeah, Maricarn and Spectral are their gods, you know? They, 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 perform, they come out swinging again. The absolute brads. Yeah, ne- never, never fucking miss. 
Um, Speaking of artists that don't miss, um, <laughs> what? How is the new glass jaw? This is not new glass jaw. This is this is, is that just a reissue? That is a reissue. Yes, that album came well, out. Well, seeing as you're a resident guy that hates post hardcore, what do you think? Um, well, I had to listen to this for the the page for Music Chad's Discord album exchange of the week. Uh, I was recommended this glass jaw record oh um, what, what album did you give i gave i get the only i was like okay what what the hell can i do i looked at this guy's last fm right and it was it was weird it was very strange like a perfect circle was one of his most listened to um artists like over tool and i thought that was really interesting um and like a bunch of other weird shit deftones was super high and you know i was like you know what I was, he's heard a load, so I'm like, okay, the only other band that I know that's doing this sound right now is, um, is Higher Power, okay? So I gave him the Higher Power record. I would have given the, uh, Maruth the album. I uh, that's probably a good one, also. Um. Any, anywho. Anyway. What do you, what do you think of the, the post-hardcore? Um, I think, <sighs> there is times when I, this album goes hard as shit, and I love it. Um. There are other times when it feels like I'm listening to a Pierce the Veil song, and I don't like that. Um, but I do think that the amount of sort of ground this album covers is pretty important, especially in 2002 when it came out. Mm-hmm. Um, and you get a little bit of that at the drive-in style. You get a little bit of the modern post-hardcore style. And uh, yeah, I think I think it's pretty good. Yeah, people go bananas for this record. Yeah, I would, I would go hard as shit to these songs. I would go, I would go see Glassjaw live. <laughs> like, surprise, yeah. surprise! Without, without a doubt, in my mind, I'd go. Yeah, because there, there are some real bangers on this record. Like "Tip Your Bartender," sick track. Um, fucking all of the you know super hard songs. Two tabs of mescaline. Fell apart, Jesus. Um, there's a bunch, but anyway, good album, but. Also, I went back, I, I, I want to mention this, because I feel like we did not give The Assassination of Julius Caesar its fair shake, dude. That record is so good. Yeah, like, no, it's really great. <laughs> like, comparatively to Flowers of Evil, and like every other synth pop album that I've heard, aside from maybe like The Black Queen, but I haven't heard much modern, kind of darkened synth pop in a long time and i don't know man that that assassination of julius caesar record is just is is just not so dude no i look i agree i i remember when flowers of evil came out i was so pumped for it because assassination's so sick and then i heard it and i was like this is horrific (laughs) no but no it's a really sick concept album it's vibey Mm -hmm. um christoph's performances are pretty great yeah it flows really well yeah solid also, I after listening to this record a bunch, I went back and listened to Berg Tat, and um, oh my god, that's just an Agalock album. Berg Tat, really? Their first Ulver's first record, the 1995 one, is just like old Agalock, like identical. Now, granted, that came out before Agalock, so you know, like the first Agalock album is is I guess Ulver influenced, but like if you listen to it, it's like. If you just skip, because there's no harsh vocals, right? At all. And it just has that, Oh my like, god. No, like, it, it, it's scary identical. I mean, I'm pretty familiar with, of, of the old Ulver, Natten's Madrigal. Yeah. Which is, like, very aggressive, just second yeah. wave stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's funny. I had no idea that was what they were like. Yeah, right? So, yeah, know. dude, younger over cool. they were such edge lords. <laughs> the interviews they give in Lords of Chaos are hysterical. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anywho, speaking of Lords of Chaos, uh, Adam, what do you think the best Blink One Eighty Two album is? I am on no authority to give a good answer. Um, I prob. I mean, honestly, I mean, obviously, Enema of the State is a classic, but I mean. I, I think some people would make an argue for a couple of the other ones around the same time. Um, 
maybe dude, like the Brad dude ranch I, versus I, I, the Virgin <laughs> Adam of the State. I'm not. I'm not really sure. I, I mean, if I go through track lists, obviously Enema's Enema of the State just pops out so much. Um, but I have not given these records their fair share recently, so I am no way to judge. But my my gut instinct would be to go with Enema, just because there's there's so many bangers on that one. Fair. I think. fair. Well, I, I don't know. I listened to Eminem a couple times this week, and uh, definitely it still holds up. But uh, honestly, like you know, I know all these songs pretty damn well. And what struck me, was, what struck me was like just sort of the very casual misogyny. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, gosh, what's the, the one of the one of the songs chorus is just like, some girls try too hard. <laughs> it just goes. <laughs> goes on and on mm-hmm. uh, but any ign- ignoring that the one album i actually listened to a lot this weekend this week uh was civilization 2 dude i'm a no I dude love, it, it i love smacks. dude civilization 2 absolute smacker i've had the um the chorus of princess in the clock mm-hmm. and just like and we will be well rested when ascension comes like in my head all week yeah it's my favorite caro record Obviously, it's just it's just an EP, but and I'm yeah, not I'm it, not really that familiar with their stuff. But I enjoyed it a lot more than good. Civilization One. Civilization One was a record that was a little boring for me. Interesting. You know, I really like this record. Yeah, I think uh, it's pretty freaking cool. Anything else you want to touch on before before we delve in? Let me just check my last FM hella quick because every so often I go through like an album like once that I I do think is. Um, I'm just gonna be like, yo, hear me out, but Eat the Elephant's the best. No, uh, oh my god, perfect stop. Circle. I can't. That record is abhorrently bad. Yeah. Um. Oh, there's a, uh. No, uh, I, I, I don't really need to talk about that, I guess. Um. Well, okay, actually, serious question. What do you oh think my- the best song on Meriden Noms is? I mean, probably Orestes, objectively. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Maybe Orestes or, like, <sighs> Rose is also just, it, Rose, that song goes hard as shit. But you're telling me you don't see me, though? <laughs> yes, you're right. No, um, honestly, it's it's probably Magdalena. It's always been Magdalena for me. I mean, that, that song's also awesome. That, yeah, all the songs in that record are awesome. Sleeping the only, Beauty kind of underrated, though. No, I, I agree. The only the only bad song on that album, I would say, is Ren Holder, and that song's not even bad. I agree. Um, Sorry, you, you were no, like that's about... Fine. You were I, spurging I wanted, I wanted to say... I wanted to mention two things. I wanted to mention one. Holy shit, that new Black Midi single is disgusting. Dude, oh my god, right? I heard that, I was like... And then I watched the Kex performance, and I was like... It's stupid. Why are Black Midi just the best? It's stupid. Like, this band is just breaking new ground in rock and roll, so good for them. Um, uh, Dude, you know Calvacade's gonna be, like, top five. Yeah. Um, I do not like the most recent CU CU Space Cowboy single. Was it the collab with? No, a clear picture from an unreliable narrator. It is a song from the split, but it is one of their solo songs. Oh, dude, you know this this song's gonna suck. I do I don't, not e- I don't even want to give it a listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I saw you've been listening to Songs in a Fighting Squad and Correlation this week, so I did. I did listen. I did listen to both, um, and I still hold my opinions true. Um, yeah. I think the mo- I think melodic metalcore is stupid. Okay, boomer. Yeah, but, um, that's all I got. I think uh, the chant the chant sucks. Everyone, we're we're saying it here. The new Gojira album is gonna be bad. Oh yeah, we're we're totally casting about this next week, yeah. and like we're gonna blow up on like r slash Goj- Gojira. Literally, people are gonna hate listening to the cut podcast. Yeah, but, honestly, yeah, no. you know what? Any publicity is good publicity. Yeah, holy shit. I like, out of every single song on this new Gojira album, I like, like, one and a half of them, and the rest are just horrible. Yeah. Like, 
The chant is five minutes of one riff. It's not a good riff. It has a boring vocal melody. It's it's very repetitive and does nothing interesting. Like, this is the same band that gave us fucking Backbone. That gave us Flying Whales. That gave us the heaviest matter in the universe. That gave us Ouroboros. That gave us Toxic Garbage Island. That gave us L'Enfant Sauvage. That gave us... Like, are you shitting me? <laughs> These guys know exactly what they're doing. I don't like, know. <laughs> I don't know what happened, dude. I really don't. Like, what? How can you just go from being, like, one of the best metal bands of the 2000s, knowing how to perfectly, like, capture all these different styles and make it nice and accessible, but heavy and technical at the same time, go, and then you just, like, go to shitting out butt rock choruses? <laughs> it's really bad, man. Like, they, it's just so dumb. I said this before, but, like, it's dumb. No, I agree. Like, this is me. I literally went back and re-listened to Magma. Because my friend that also likes metal was like, you know what, dude? I think Magma's a little under. I think Magma gets too much hate. Like, compare these songs to the Fortitude singles. Dude, I'd like, rather listen to the Magma singles, dude. No, literally, like, at least Magma, like, the songs are kind of interesting, and each thing has its own sonic idea. This whole album just feels like dumbed down, like, Gojira for boomers. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's just... It's so boring. It's yeah, so we're gonna give this album like a stuff. four out of ten next yeah, week. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be bad. We're gonna. Ne- Dude, is this what it's it. like? Is this how Anthony Fantano feels when he listens to like ordinary corrupt human human love? I hope not, dude. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, he's gonna review this record too. And he'll be like, "So, uh, this new Gojira album, it's not good. Not good. I don't know. He could give it. Hey, you know what? He gave um." What the fuck did he just give an, uh, a good... Oh, he gave the Cannibal Corpse a strong seven. Yeah, actually, funnel, I, I wanted to mention it. the Cannibal Corpse, because... Did you the listen to it? Ac- oh, I did, I did, actually. So, I've been... For those who don't know, me and Adam play the game Magic the Gathering. Most, you know, it's the most popular card game in the world. Quite a bit. I just built a Thraxum Under EDH deck, right? Mm-hmm. And Thraxum Under is a very metal card, so whenever I cast the commander, I have to, I've been playing Cannibal Corpse songs. Good. And so I just went through the whole record. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I, I, I do like that. I, I'm proud of that. Jesus Christ. Yeah, pretty funny, right? Yeah. Dude, Phoebe. She's, Dude. she's back. <laughs> no. Oh stupid. my god. Anyway, you know what? We were, we're supposed to be talking about, uh, uh, the the Swedish band today, not not the Florida band or the France band. No, 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 no. no. We're talking about our good old country mates. Of course, oh, the, that's the one. So, before we t- we get into our opinions on Watershed, let's just set, let's set the scene, if you will. Yeah, go ahead. Set the scene. So you're Opeth. Since you dropped Blackwater Park, you've been subtly building momentum as like one of the up and coming big metal bands right you drop ghost reveries it it makes you it, it has it, it it makes you into an even bigger deal right but suddenly in the midst of all these things your drummer has a crippling heroin addiction and gets Yikes. kicked out of the band at the same time your longtime guitarist who's been there since day one just doesn't really want to do it anymore because he feels like it's not artistically fulfilling and he'd rather just be an it dude in sweden <laughs> So you're Michael Ackerfeld. What do you do? You get two of the most technically competent Swedish musicians, um, Frederick Axen on guitar of of Arch Enemy and a few other bands. You know, classical shredder. Like, where you'll I'll, I'll mention his solos a lot as in the next few Opeth albums. But this dude knows how to play guitar, mm. right? And you get Martin Axenrot, another uh, Swedish musician um, who they auditioned for on drums. He was the original. He was the original drummer for Bloodbath, I think. Another my, my Galactic project. Yeah, well, at the time, I didn't. Yeah, anywho, drummer for and this dude rips. Like as far as like modern technical drummers, he knows. He he just he is there. He can play death metal with the best of them, and he's pretty versatile, very fill heavy. You know, it's a fun style. But you're Michael. You're like, oh man, I don't have I don't have my my boys, Martin and Peter to, like, sort of ground my songwriting anymore, and I can finally go into prog bullshittery. Mm. But at the same time, we're blo- we're blowing up in death metal. So you know what I'll do? I'll make an album that, like, is kind of death metal-y with, like, uh, but also do whatever the fuck I want, because I can. And then he made Watershed in, like, a month. And you can tell. 
Ah, uh, a watershed. So, Watershed has the unique position of being adored by younger fans and kind of hated by older fans, and I think I get it now. Can you explain why? As as someone who did take that transition yourself. <laughs> well, I remember when I was younger, like guys like K-Mac um, and a few other like notable K-Mac YouTubers would be like, Watershed, sick Opeth album, one of my favorite records, right? And I'd be like, okay, yeah, whatever. And I really enjoyed it, you know? I mean, let's be real. Air Apparent, Lotus Eater, amazing tunes. Slappers. And the album has variety, too. Um, for, well, for a lot of these guys, this was sort of their introduction to Opeth. And, you know, your first Opeth album is probably going to have a special place in your heart. Right? But at the same time, on this album, we don't really see the sort of cultured, like, I don't know, beret-tipping songwriting opeth of the past right where the songs flow like immaculately we get a more we get a much more like i guess bt bam sense of songwriting on this record where the tunes are a lot more moment focused and without very strong transitions Mm -hmm. and this is very much what was like in vogue at the time you had bands like born of osiris you had bands like uh, like veil of maya and like it's (laughs) it's weird that they, you know, this record came out at that time because it's just so kind of removed. Like that, I guess that popular metal. This is not popular metal anymore, which is weird. Yeah, no, about. right? But yeah, I mean, look, if if you're like you know 16 and you're really into like After the Burial and Port of Osiris and like Devil Wears Prada and all those bands with like certain elements of progressive music, and then you hear Opeth, who were like a pretty beloved band from the older generation, you're probably going to latch on to, like, the songs in a different way because mm-hmm. they're a lot more moment-focused. Yeah. And, unfortunately, that sort of leaves Watershed <laughs> in a weird position because I know for for a long time, this was actually my favorite Opeth record. I remember whenever I, whenever I was down, to be like, all right, throw on Watershed and then just go hard to, like, the first four songs. But now, after listening to the entire discography quite a bit in the past few months... I think Watershed is not great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I never really got into Watershed as a youngin, um, um, but I do like it more now than I did then. Uh, but I, I do agree with you that I do think it is one of their least memorable records, um, at least in terms of enjoyment. Um, there's just so much, it seems like, is lacking from this work rather than the older stuff. I mean, transitions, that's a huge thing. There's, like, none of those here. And whether they yeah. are, they're they are just kind of... They're not very impressive comparatively, or, like, so natural rather than the old um, sort of versions of them. Um, mm-hmm. There's, like, a lot of the tracks here just feel really disjointed because of that. I think, that, honestly, that's one of the bigger problems on the record. Um, but, like, yeah, it's just not as memorable, too. No, I agree. And I, mean, like, I don't want to get too much into every single track. but Yeah, because, you know, we're going to do the breakdown. But right. it is sort of weird, because, like, Michael, at this point, had already achieved, like, that songwriting apex, you know? Yeah. Like, we just talked about Ghost Reveries. That record's perfect, right? <laughs> And so is Blackwater Park. And so, to a lesser extent, so is our still life and, like, Damnation, mm. and My Arms, and Watershed. And throughout all this time, there was, like, a clear evolution, right? And then Watershed happens, and he just, like, throws half of the, those strengths out the window for, like, zany breakdowns and, yeah. like, more prog. And don't get me wrong. Like, there are some t- moments on the record where I think, like, the experimentation really does work. And it, 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 there is something to be said where, like, 15 years into their career, Opeth you know, are willing to just go absolutely hog wild with their sound. But especially in the the B trip side of this record, like the songs just aren't there. Yeah. I agree. There's just, uh, there really is no track here that I I can place among my favorites in the Opeth rank. Yeah, no, I agree. It's like, like, don't be wrong. I think Air Parent and Lotus Eater are amazing, but I don't think they're as good as, Deliverance, or Ghost of Perdition, or Blackwater Park, or The Moor, or Mm -hmm. hell, even like Black Rose Immortal, you know? Right. Yeah. And, I don't know, I guess we'll get into it. The last thing I will say is that 
I don't know what exactly you want to attribute this to. You could say, oh, well, you know, Peter and Lopez sort of real pulled Michael in. They they held him back a little from embracing his more wacky tendencies. You could say this mm. album was rushed and kind of was pushed by the label in a certain way. Like, dude, this record, guess where it charted on the Billboard um, 200 for albums? Like 50. 19. Wow. This record cracked the top 20 of Billboard best-selling albums. Like, this was huge. This was crazy big. And I don't know, you know, that was, that was probably due to a number of things, but, so, you know, this album was rushed, it was pushed by the label, and it didn't have the original crew that probably held Michael back to a certain extent. Right. And maybe even contributed little flourish, songwriting flourishes. Because, I mean... <laughs> I don't really want to, I don't like talking about this too much because the musicians from on all Opeth records after this point are pretty great. Like, I think Frederick and and Martin Axenrod are like phenomenal guys, don't get me wrong. But for whatever reason, the songs just have been as good since. Yeah. um, I'm not exactly sure where that goes. Um, You know, it just kind of is what it is at this point. Um, And this is the Opeth that we're stuck with for the next one. Two, three, four records. Um, so, I don't know. Better get used to it. <laughs> and with that, we go into Coil. Okay, I'm sorry. This song doesn't need to exist. And I only mean it doesn't need to exist because I think it should be shoved onto the front of Air Apparent. This is, a intro, this is an intro track that I do not support. Well, I was going to say, I remember the first time like we ever <laughs> i remember we so we bought this album together like many moons ago got the cd threw it in the computer and then when we were playing magic threw it on and i remember <laughs> distinctly the first reaction to this was is this opeth yeah what because <laughs> we like we, the first like the albums before this open with like what Banger. reef <laughs> the, the more we ghost of even, edition we don't even need to list them. it's just every song is it's it's amazing it, yeah and, and then uh, intro and track. like, wait, three minute acoustic duet with like Mellotron <laughs> and like, it kind of sounds like Jethro Tull mixed with the Canterbury scene. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make that any being, sense. Like, this is the first thing where you're like, this is the first tipping point where you're like, wait, what, what did it, what? <laughs> and don't get me wrong, I actually like Coil. I think it's a good intro no, track. No, I, I, I just, yeah. I, I knew, I was going to say, like... <laughs> As I was listening to this, I was like, oh, Adam's totally going to say, well, uh, it should be on the intro to Air Parent. It, sh- it should be. That being said, I don't think it's a bad song. I do like it, and it is certainly a memorable way to open up the record, especially when we haven't heard anything like this previously from Opa. Um, yeah, and like, I mean, the the performance by the, the female vocalist, yeah. um, Natalie Lorix, who's also Swedish. Surprise, surprise. No um, is a uh, I don't know it's cool and apparently originally the album was supposed to open with Air Parent and then Michael was like ah oh, you know what as a fuck you we should open with our soft song and then have it contrast with their heaviest song weird well not weird I get it but <laughs> I don't know no uh, right. and I'm look don't get me wrong this song is pretty nice like I love this the the string textures the way mm-hmm. the melody sort of builds is really cool the, the lack of percussion and the way it all contrasts with like the first dissonant chord of air parents awesome yeah it's just, I don't know <laughs> it, it it is kind of weird for Opeth it's just, it's, I, it, it's just really strange like I do not expect to be like I, this is not the mood setter for this album. It's not. Well, it kind of is, because this album has, like, three prog tracks. I, I know, but... I don't know. It, for me, it's fine, and I and I get, you know, I get into it, I like this song, but... I don't know. It just goes right into Air Apparent. And it feels very, again, disjointed. Um, completely unconnected, and... Um, well, know. that's the point. I, actually, I love the transition, honestly. I think it's sick. I, it just kind of, I, I like, understand you hit the final the chord, and though. then it gets heavy, and, like, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, you get the, the, the noise, and then it come in. I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's just, I don't know. The stigma, the stigma of the first track intro, the because it's an intro track, I, I there's already, like, a, a check mark 
on my negative list. Mm-hmm. Okay, like I don't know. I I just kind of do wish that it had more of an identity within this track itself, within Air Apparent. Yeah, and it just good. does feel very disjointed. So, anyway. and, uh, I will say the the lyrics here are like s- some of the the most direct I've gotten to this point. It's just, it's just like she told me why, she told me lies. <laughs> she told me why, <laughs> and like you. <laughs> I've told her how I've always <laughs> stayed. <laughs> Like, <laughs> when you get out of here, when you leave me behind, you'll find that the years pass us by. Like, at this point, Michael is donning his, his like, <laughs> his divorce dad hat. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> I don't know. It's it's funny. Um, especially, like, this is the band where I'm used to, like, and I saw myself as a leader. <laughs> or, like, you know, the... the and it's it's very odd hearing Michael just go full like dad rock on us, but hey. Uh, let, let's talk about Air Parent, which is like yeah. an amazing track. Yeah, uh, one of the better re- ones on the record for sure. Yeah, like oh my god, from like note one, you just get open dissonant chord and uh, Martin Axrot like going, but like just keeping a very steady like mm. pulse. And it's sick, and, like, this album is really, like, Opeth doing the death metal Opeth really, really well. Yeah. Like, this is probably their heaviest song uh, since Deliverance. Yeah. I love the way, I love that little, like, piano. Do, 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 do. Mm. Into the riff again. And the contrast of, like, you know, the soft parts with the very aggressive Opeth riffing never gets old. Nope. And this is tra- one of the tracks where I would say that the transitions are certainly more focused, uh, mm-hmm. and I guess more traditional for Opeth. Um, I agree. With, you know, drum fill transitions and sort of like random guitar solos leading into the acoustic passages and whatnot. Um, yeah, no, and the guitar, dude, the guitar solo, like, three minutes is, like, mm. so sick. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, I, re- I really like the Mellotron stuff and, like, the, the pretty subtle acoustic weeds that's sort of and like the way it weaves in and out of a turnaround section is pretty cool mm-hmm. like we get like three minutes of like turnaround bridge instrumental stuff yeah in, in the hands of a lesser band like like dream theater <laughs> you know just would not be interesting but they're all pets so they make it work and then we mm-hmm. do the blast beats at like 5 30 heavy as fuck yeah no and i really love the the chorus like dunno I, I, what are even the lyrics there? I legitimately don't know. It's it's weird. This track is very symphonic in construction. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, which is is new territory for them, so I'm I'm happy for them. But uh, yeah, I don't know. This song, it just feels like I'm listening to like a random Opeth track. From one of the deeper cuts on, uh, like, um, honestly, even, like, Ghost Reveries or Blackwater Park, but, you know, a a little different, but it's kind of on that same playing field, I feel. Yeah, no, totally. And, like, I I mean, let's be real, there's some clear, like, sonic, like, I guess evolution here, like, you mentioned the horns, the strings, the Mm -hmm. Mellotron, the keys, and, like, the way... You know, it does the classic Opa thing where they sort of have a bunch of hooks without ever, not ever having hooks, and like every part's very memorable. And like the way it all sort of builds to the final like guitar outro is awesome. It's almost like a callback to like Forest of October, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. It's and I mean, I this song's sick. Like, I I love it. It's one of my favorite yeah. Opa songs. Bangs hard. It's pretty. It's very heavy. There are like I don't think there are any clean vocals here actually, right? No, no, I don't believe so. Um. You know, now that we've come to Air Parent at the end, uh, you know, I do think Coil does a good job of contrasting this track, but I do still wish that it was at kind of at the beginning and might have had. I like the transition now. I guess sort of on re uh, uh, analysis, but um, I don't know. It still feels like I I I don't like intro tracks for the sake of their existence in the track list. So, yeah, no, no, I feel you. Um, I don't know. I just but, really like... Yeah, I mean, uh, this is like one of the rare examples on the album where it's really Opeth doing what Opeth does best, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I will say, like, 
you know, this is well, we can t- start talking about the production because this album sounds very different. It's really modern sounding. There's like, there's not yeah. much analog space. Everything it like, reminds me of no. Gojira. Everything's super tight. And Absolutely. It, that, yeah. And what like one of the trademarks of like I think Golden a- Era Opeth is like how warm the rhythm mm-hmm. section sounds. Mm-hmm. And this record sounds like the the drum production and the bass production is distinctly like modern and hyper. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not to say it doesn't work. Like, it sounds great, but it's just very, it's different. Yeah, I mean, this, this, this is the sellout record, okay? <laughs> you know, like, Heritage might be, like, I guess the full first clean record, but, like, this is, this is the Opeth sellout album. And I'm not saying anything regarding the content of the album itself, but I do think that when you upgrade your production like that, that's the moment. Especially since this album is so different. No, yeah, I feel you. And, I'm, I mean, not, I'm not I, saying Opa sold out though. I would. I, say. I think I think Axrod's a f- phenomenal drummer. Yeah, and, like, some of his fills here and like the way he rides and blasts is just stuff like Lopez would never do. But it definitely, I don't know if it suits the music as well. You know? Yeah, no, I agree. I I do think that Lopez is the superior Opeth Ope drummer. Yeah. And now, now there's also you know the fight between what the hell's the you know, like, I feel like we could have two separate lists about Opeth. Like, what is the best Opeth album, and then what's the best fucking, just the best album. Because, like, you know what? I can see how people like this album a lot. Um, but I do think that is, you know, the departure certainly takes away from their sound a little bit. Yeah, no, I agree. And I'm, uh, no, all that being said, like, I still enjoy this album quite a bit. It's just, it's 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 not as good as the stuff that's coming before it. Yeah. Um. I will say the lyrics on this track are like, I love. I love. These are these are some of my favorite Opeth lyrics. It's just Michael going full like, cheese. Like he's talking. The heir apparent is like you know some tyrannical uh, ruler, and he's just laying on like the death metal imagery. Like yeah. His gaze soiling what used to be, cl- or his touch soiling what used to be clean. His gaze burning on the edge of our dreams. A thousand lies cast from the throne of secrecy. Pearls before swine, they are nothing but blind. Um, the futile test drowned in the levy of deception. Rid us of your judgment, heir apparent. Like, I'm sorry, that's just so cool. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Michael then, has not lost his lyric writing touch, that's for sure. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I think the lyrics here are better than basically any track on Ghost Reveries. So, take that yeah. soul. Right. Shall so, we move, uh, shall we move on? Yeah, uh live staple. I love uh, Lotus Eater is probably the other amazing song on this record. Mm. Like it's so cool. <laughs> like Yeah. Like, you know, we start off with just like some humming, like some kid cuddy uh hums. <laughs> <thumbs, laughs> and then blast beats. Yeah. Liquid is in your throat. Yeah, for really hopeless intense. delight. Like, oh my, what? It's so <laughs> cool. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know. The song is definitely all about contrast. And like, mm-hmm. where, whereas before, you know, we're used to Opeth being like, oh, clean section, choir boy vocals with death metal. The song is like zaniness, like jazz stuff with death metal. And it really works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um... This track is really, really interesting. Um, all performances are really nice. All the, all the vocals, you know, clean and harsh are obviously great. Michael hasn't changed, I don't think, in that front. Um, and yeah, we do kind of have the older Opeth come back on this track, where we have like truly an acoustic and clean breakdown, where mm-hmm. like Air Parent kind of, you know, it, it kept its heaviness throughout. Um, but. This track's got a really nice build, and it it goes into that zany fucking whatever the hell. Prog yeah, like the poker breakdown. Yeah, it's 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 very strange. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, also a testament to uh, Martin's drumming on this track, doing you know being able to go from those super intense and quick blast beats to the crazy fuckery that happens at the end of the track. Yeah, no, and like, no, no this song is like kind of like for me this is like the best opeth song without transitions you know because like 
the first like four minutes are just going back and forth between all these disparate se- or desperate sections, and it just works really well. I like the way everything cuts out again before going back into the intro, mm-hmm. like fleeing your sorrows, pushing your spirit away, sick of the weakness of the. Sun. Like, it's, I don't know. It's it's really cool. Um, I, I kind of like the chorus thing here. Um, the the solo like the four minute mark is really awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the way it transitions from like just a very soft like you know synth and uh, acoustic part into the poke is really cool. No, and the ending of this track is really awesome. Like with that, in the pride of a mother drawn close in a mother's son. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's very memorable. It's very memorable, very unique. Um, certainly uh, a highlight for the record. Um, and yeah, I mean, I can understand why this one's also a live uh, staple, uh, additionally. Because, yeah, yeah, it's, it's really banger. fun. Very fun track. Um, dynamics help with that. You got, a little, yeah. you got the Mellotron to close this song, too. Yeah, and then, like, the random, like, pub Dude. sounds. No. Um, are the lyrics here anything of note? Um, yeah, no, this is more like just Opeth, like, pretty sick death metal imagery, like, I don't know. I don't honestly know what it's about. Mm. I don't know. A Lotus Eater is someone that, that eats, like, um, um, sorry, the Lotus, like, it's, it's, it's an Odyssey reference in the Odyssey. Yeah, 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 the Lotus yeah, 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 yeah. are people that eat, like, lotuses and they go wacky because they kind of drug and it's like, yeah parable for drug use or whatever and you know this song's probably about the modern equivalent of a lotus eater like sure. i don't know lyrics are pretty like you know what they are <laughs> like yeah, that's real yeah, it's yeah. so fun but i mean there's once again like sick of the weakness of the psych a whisper from the heart of evil luring them all into despair yeah um oh brother you are a killer and you target yourself i wish you'd never come back for us to see the beckoning end Jesus like, I don't know. <laughs> like i don't know i like them i think they're pretty fun yeah, that's fun and if you like death metal opath that's basically it for the record yeah um i if you loved deliverance and were very upset uh or no uh, yeah deliverance if you if you love deliverance and were so upset that we put it so far down on our best of opath list then you should you should walk away because you're not getting any more in the next four songs over yeah, in the like next 29, forty minutes. Literally the next. Oh boy, yeah, here we it's go. Like tw- it's like thirty minutes, but like I don't even so. know. It might be a little bit longer, like thirty. Well, so uh, so yeah, no, it's like so that's nineteen minutes plus fifteen, so it's like thirty-four. Oh, weird. Jesus. It's like okay. literally more than half the album. Is this quote unquote B side? Yeah. And okay, let, let's start with Burden because Burden's a pretty good tr- song. It is. It is. And it, you know what? It comes at a place in the record where you would expect it to, and it works in the yeah. record. Like this is where Atonement was on Ghost Reveries, basically, right? Yeah. And unlike Atonement, which is sort of like a you know this kind of a psychedelic that. break, this is a real song. This is Michael saying, you know what? I've listened to so much Genesis, Robert Wyatt, King Crimson. Jethro Tull, yes, we're doing it. We're going hard. We're we're doing it. Mm-hmm. Actually, yeah. also Gentle Giant. Yeah, the, the, yeah. They uh, this is the prog ballad of prog ballads, man. You know, <laughs> it's mm-hmm. kind of memey, but like this song is pretty epic. It, it's got some really nice, uh, I guess, chordal changes. Really memorable. Um, I guess uh, it's got a memorable yeah, no, enough refrain, and obviously Michael's very talented at you know his vocal performance and the guitar lines are very interesting. The mm-hmm. solos in this song are sick, and you know although it's pretty simple and it's kind of a, it just kind of grows and sort of ebbs and flows between dynamics. It doesn't really change its sound up at all. It's still pretty great. Yeah, no, like I agree. I mean, it's funny because. This song, they're literally using a Hammond organ, a Mellotron, and then they're using a Strat with, like, a blues driver for, like, <laughs> you know, the very, the solos. So they're going full, like, 70s throwback. And yeah. it's funny, because this song is honestly probably better than any track on Heritage. I know that's a little, <laughs> getting a little ahead. But no, I mean, if you're going to do 70s Opeth, like, have it as an interlude, 
have it be a fully formed song and have it still have that taste of like Acker felty and disharmony that yeah. like the band was sort of known for, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the organ solos on the song are stupid. <laughs> but they're funny, like, I don't know. Like, it's so well done. Um, yeah, I, I, gotta, I gotta give them credit, but like, wow, it's just such a meme. No, I, I really love the um the little guitar lead on the intro, like the do no 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 no. It's really cool. And oh my god, so Adam, what's your first thought on the little like the outro here, where Michael plays a nylon riff and then it slowly gets detuned? I I mean I think it's cool. I think it's a cool way to end your song. You know, it it is kind of random, but like. I, I think it's cool. No, I, I agree too, but do you know what I think of? I think of Will the Run and the way they end not one, but two albums! I'm going. I'm going to leave <laughs> because I don't... Jesus Christ. Look, man, the, like when I say this album is utterly beloved by the younger generation of Opeth fans, I mean it. Well... Now we know Wilderun's favorite open albums. Wilderun, we'll have to have you on the podcast to discuss if yeah, we're gonna have to have Evan. is true. Hey, I'm literally getting a tattoo in the shop that the Wilderun guitarist works on next week. So. There you go. Perfect. I'll be like, hey, bro, bro, I got a question. Bro, I have a question. <laughs> um, um, yeah, yeah it's but cool. I, it, it's cool. It's funny because I can think of like, are, are there any other bands that do this? Because I feel like a few have, you know? I feel like, like some have, I'm sure. It, I, I'm sure of it. It's fine. I, don't know and why, I do. But... I do think it's a nice sort of way to like, to, I guess, take the piss out yeah. of like, the, the immense cheese. Yeah. That just came and it does kind of, you know what? It sets up whatever the hell can come next. It really doesn't leave anything. It doesn't lead you into anything. It just kind of. It's like a definitive. Okay, time to flip the record over. Yeah. No. Totally. Um, which I think is actually a, a good thing and something that'll benefit it. Uh, in its place in the track list. But the B-side of this album! Wow, man. Yeah, so uh, Porcelain Heart may or may not be the worst Opeth death metal song. I just... Ah, uh, man. These songs are so frustrating. Yeah, because they really are... Like, especially with this song, there are so many elements of just greatness here. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, it just doesn't work. No. Like, I mean, that intro riff is so cool, right? It's so layered. There's so many things going on. You have, like, the key, like, harmony being contrasted by, like, a constantly shifting rhythm and, like, all these nice accents. Mm-hmm. And then you just kind of get into the verse and it's like... <laughs> <sighs> it's kind of a snooze, sir, dude. It's funny because the vocal melody on this song has always kind of stuck with me. And I certainly remember it. I also always remember the, like, just complete fades to silence that happen often on this song. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just kind of weirdly structured. And the transitions... Not even transitions. It go it jumps back between, you know, the heavy and acoustic, but it does it kind of too often. Yeah, no, I agree. And, like, the parts here just aren't that interesting. Like, no. the structure of the song is... Intro, verse, intro reprise, verse, like bridge section, which the din and internet. Yeah. A bridge with acoustic part and then back into the din and then 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 it is a good riff. It is it's a good fucking riff. And it it kinda gets squandered. I don't know, like yeah, like the song just it does not it doesn't flow very well and the parts don't go together. Like they just don't. Um like Especially, like, the, I lost all I had that April day. I just think it's a little graining. It's a little too simple. There's not that much going on. Uh, I do like how the song, like, fades between the sections with, like, the, the panning in the left ear and the right ear. And, the yeah. and that's cool. And I like I the actually, oh, sorry. Go for it. Oh, I was going to say, I think one of my favorite moments on the records, actually, is the acoustic part in the middle, where it's like, um... I see roads beneath my feet lead me through wastelands of deceit. Rest your head now, don't you cry. Don't ever ask the reason why. Damn, I just discovered where every Haken song has originated from. No, this is this is certainly more um uh 
it feels kind of like um I'm trying to think of another prog band that kind of does this exact style. Um, Caligula's horse. Actually, yeah, that's exactly. What it is. <laughs> it's exactly yep. the. Yup. Oh my god! Here we go. Well, well we know where Young Prog came from. No, literally, the entirety of, like, the 2010s generation of Prague just came from this one Opeth album. That's very strange, but anyway. Um, I like the end of this song. Uh, I think I, I think it builds to a nice little climax. I like, I like the choral vocals that sort of, you know, just sort of drive home the, the riff and the really thumpy uh, drum part. But yeah, but, yeah I don't know. Oh, it's a little under- underwhelming. It's definitely a, little... a moment song. It doesn't really flow well. And yeah. It's not great. I don't know. Not like, great. I'd rather listen to like any track on Deliverance than this. I would agree. I would agree. <laughs> and also, the lyrics are just bad. Like, <laughs> They don't say that? No. Well, I mean, so it's probably about like a ghost or something. I don't know, man. <laughs> like... It's Michael, man. Yeah. We know what he. We know how he writes lyrics. This is him not doing it especially well. Well, longest song in the album time, and yeah, a long song it is. Uh, <laughs> um, this song feels long. It is long to listen to. There are many moving pieces, many moving parts, and for that, I'll give it to Opeth for her songwriting. But it is still disjointed. Um, there's yeah, more death metal though, a little bit. No, kinda. there's 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 like a tad bit, and I actually like the song. I don't think it's a good song. I like it though. <laughs> like the all the Fair. the trends, like there are like 15 different parts of the song, and they're all kind of good on their own. In the way, like I kind of respect the gall that like they just jam them all together. Yeah, yeah. I like all the reverse vocals. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's cool. yeah. Um. <laughs> They're not like th- there's a lot of reverse things like it's it's kind of funny I don't know. This song just it kind of just sits in certain places for a little too long like that open like we don't build into full rock instrumentation until like five yeah. minutes <laughs> but four or five minutes and then it goes back to. You have Mellotron and whatever, and then that transitions straight into the death metal, and you're, it's just, it's really jarring going back and forth between all these pieces. The pieces are good, though. Those awesome blast beats come back again. Yeah, um, no, I agree. Like, I think the back half of this track's really great. And, like, the first half, like, sort of, wait, we knew it's nice. We got, like, a, we, this is, like, a, I think this might be the only time they open this gog free, but they literally reprise a part from the early album. With the yeah. do, 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 Yep. From, is, that, is that from Airplane or Low Cedar, or is it just like the... Um, wait, I gotta, uh, hold on, let me find it. It's not like six, it's not like, it's not like the end of five. Oh, I think that's Air Apparent. Yeah. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure, yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, I don't know, man. This this track feels very disjointed to me, yeah, and right. it literally repeats the. It ends the middle like breakdown where you got like that fading like synth um, line that mm-hmm. happens in the middle of the song and at the end of the song, which I just think is kind of lazy. It's the exact same thing. I don't know. No, I agree. This rec- this song is just ugh, man. For me, it's just uh, it's. Uh, there's too many moving parts with not enough oil between the gears. Yeah, and it's really weird, because, like, up to this point, like, Opeth's been able to do, like, whatever the hell they want in, like, a 40-minute song, and it'll be great. Dude, I don't even... I like I like tracks on Orchid more than I like this song. <laughs> and I don't know what there's to say about that, but, like, that track... That album had no transitions whatsoever. No, and I here agree. We are. Yeah, like, I, I agree. I, I I do like the ah. Uh, yeah. It's a lot of cool ideas jammed together, and that doesn't work at all. But I do kind of respect it, you know. I mean, I obviously you have to respect it, but, we but don't no, have to the like the it. clean melodies here are good. Yeah, they are. Yeah, no, I agree. And honestly, I do like the lyrics here. 
kind of any 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 semblance of meaning. I I I could I could not tell you. I'm gonna. Right. I could not That's tell okay. you. That's okay. I don't know. It talks about like locking children away from harm and something, and I don't know finding rhymes. <laughs> All right. Ready for the last last uh, last song of Opeth death metal era? Yeah, I am, and uh, unfortunately, not a memorable <laughs> one, <laughs> in my opinion. Um. I don't no, know, I agree. Man. I don't know. This is like such a bizarre way to end an album. Like I real don't get me wrong. I think the song works in one context, and that one context is sort of like the last ever like harsh song that Opeth do. Like I think the final riff really works well as like an outro to that era. Like the do 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 do, like fading out. I really yeah. like that, and I think if you. I think if you frame it that way, it's a good song. But that being said, this song's kind of boring all over the place and doesn't really do much. It's so all over the place. There, the the acoustic clean section is so is too sparse. You just have like the really light drum part with like the occasional uh, guitar and the harmonized Michael vocal. That just like it just it just seems kind of. I'm like okay, I'm yay. You're, yeah, and then it you're just you're performing. Like... Yep. And then it Fun. just yeah, it just doesn't it just builds to like a more epic version of what it was already doing. Which mm -hmm. I don't know, Opeth's done cooler things before. No, I agree. I mean, that being said, I I do kind of like respect this album and like this song particularly, you know? Yeah, sure. I mean, it does touch most of the bases that Opeth has covered in their career up to this point. Yeah, and it's pretty cool, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, and I, I kind of I agree with your sort of assessment that it is. This, this record does kind of need to be analyzed in that final or with that finality in mind. Um, I mean, it makes sense, because, like, you can just kind of tell Michael's sick of the death metal sound, and he's ready yeah. to just do whatever he wants, or whatever he wants is prog with a little bit of wet zaniness, you know? Yeah. And that being said, like, all these songs, like, Hex Omega, I guess, to wrap up the discussion on that, I do like, like, some of the transitions here are pretty cool, and, like, some of the moments, especially, like, that final outro moment, I think is really strong. Yeah. Um, I like the, you know, I'm a sucker for Mellotron. <laughs> So don't, don't get me wrong. I'm a sucker for Mellotron. And yeah, I mean, no, I get you. It's and I got it's a little telling. Like this album was literally voted like the best album of 2008 <laughs> on like three different metal sites. I want to hold on. Let me I, let me go and rate your music really quick. And I just want to see. People do not like this album. Well, I know. Hold on. That doesn't matter. Hold on. Yeah. <clears throat> um, you keep talking. Yeah, Metal Edge and. Um, Decibel, this was voted the best album of the year. Wow. And then, for Metal Hammer's Critic's Choice, it was number two. It was number three on Right With Your Music of the year. Yeah, so, like, people like this album, and I see why. Like, it's Opeth... It's above, o it's above the way of all flesh? Excuse me? No. Anyway, continue. <laughs> <laughs> it's Opeth doing Opeth with a lot more zaniness than usual. And I, I do, like, I framing it as as like the bookend to the Opeth that you know many fans, me and Adam included, know and love. I think works well. Yeah, I do. Um, I think it's, <clears throat> I think it is a good end to that part of their career. I do. I I think that um, overall, this is a obviously I am not as familiar at all with the Prague stuff, so I really don't know what to expect from here. I've never listened to Heritage. I've never listened to Pale Communion. I've listened to Sorceress, like, once. So, like, I really don't know what I'm getting into. I hope that there are more tracks. And I don't want, I don't want spoilers! But I hope that the tracks, like, Burden, are the ones that stick out primarily on the, the coming records. Um, but I don't know if that's going to be the case. Um, and unfortunately, because I know a little bit about what people think about the coming records, um, I will say that 
this this record does put itself in a very peculiar place, um, especially yeah, no, when kind of trying to think of it objectively or subjectively, even because there's a lot of things that I guess kind of go into rating this record rather than the music itself. Yeah, I agree, and I think this um like. You know, there is a reason why a lot of people really love it, and you gotta respect that, and I think it's a good record, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I don't think it's as good as their best, I don't think it's, I don't even think it beats their mid stuff, but it's pretty good, don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. It's still, again, here we are, it's still Opeth. That yeah, has, and like, let's That be has real. not changed. Yeah, they, they, it's pretty hard for Opeth to do wrong. Yeah. I just don't think compositionally it's as strong as the other stuff. Mm-hmm. I would agree with you there, sir. Well. Uh, oh, sorry. Last thing. I no. think this album's biggest weakness is that <laughs> it's that Air Parent, Lotus Eater, and Burden are back to back. I think that's part of the problem. I also, I, I don't know. I think that there was just more. I don't know. I think Michael's Sonic experiment didn't go as expected. Yeah, well, honestly, like, this is... T- I have no basis for this claim, and feel free to correct me in the comments or whatever, but I really feel like they wrote, like, the first four songs of this record, spent a good amount of time on them, getting them right, getting yeah. all the transitions right, and then, like, they had, like... <laughs> They had to shit out 30 more minutes of material, and they were yeah. like, uh, Mellotron, uh, clean section, uh, death metal riff. Yeah. <laughs> for the last four. The last yeah, four. I agree. I agree. Well, where does it go? Dude, I don't even know. Like, this album's probably like an eight, like a light eight. Like, this might be I the worst agree. Opeth record. I, I, I'm not gonna lie. It is my personal least favorite Opeth record. So, I was originally gonna put it um, above Orchid, but on re-listening, I was like, no, man. I, I, I think the songs there are better. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I think Orchid might be a better album. That being yeah. said, I'd probably rather listen to Watershed than Orchid. I think, okay, I think that's fair. I think that's a fair place to put it. So, um, like, would we put it above Orchid or below Orchid? <laughs> um... No, man. Just because an album is easier to listen to, I don't think that has much of a place. Because, like, I can't listen to Bell Witch Mirror Reaper every day. Doesn't make that album any less than a perfect album. Internet. <laughs> um, Taps the roof. Is this, is this thing on? <laughs> is this thing on? Um, hello? No, but yeah. Uh, I, I, I think it's, I think it is an objectively, or subjectively worse record than o- Orkin. And therefore, should be at the bottom. All right. I mean, I gotta agree. I mean, I like Tell Me Rock. It's Opeth, and I like modern Opeth quite a bit. But this record just too all over the place. All right, we're doing it. Watershed up to Orchid, up to Deliverance, yeah. up to Morning Rise, up to My Arms, My Your Hearse. Yeah. Up to um, Still Life. Wait, do we put Damnation over Still Life? Yeah. I, I literally okay. Up to Still Life. Damnation, yeah, because Ghost Reveries, that, Blackwater Park. Yes, that that's exactly yeah. That's how it went. I'm pretty sure we had this. Yeah, well, we had a long argument about it. I don't know. I don't remember. I mean, it. I I I have no problem putting Still Life above. We'll we'll come with a finalized list, obviously, toward the end, but. Yeah, well, we did it, dude. We got list. through. We got through all of Death Metal Opeth. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're gonna be listening to bad albums for a little bit because, like, next week we gotta talk about Fortitude. Week oh, after God. that, we gotta talk about Heritage. <laughs> well, we have a we have our work cut out for us, I suppose. Um, but yeah, no. All right. Uh, cool. Well, you know what? We were talking about this earlier before the podcast. There's nothing in the news. Metal wise, yeah, there's like negative news. Um, there's a couple of albums that have been like announced, like Dark Throne. Um, there's a couple more. Let me, I'll take a look. Uh, I have exactly one news story that I think is worth talking about. You go for it. Well, so there are over two thousand people for an outdoors NYC hardcore show mm. this past weekend, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, I mean, I feel kind of conflicted up about that because like 
COVID's still a thing, and if you look at video of this, like, literally, like, no one's wearing masks. Mm -hmm. And, granted, all, you know, COVID doesn't really spread outdoors that easily, but, and a lot of people are at least vaccinated with the I on I but. honestly think that, uh, uh, this is going to be a new form of ID, and I think it should be. And you, know, you like, I like, held up my vaccination card for those at home. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, you know, like, especially when now everyone is able to get the vaccine, or every adult, um, I don't know, I feel like it's not unreasonable for places to kind of require that, especially if it's indoors. Even outdoors, though. Like, at a festival, I, I sure as shit wouldn't want to go to, like, a big-ass festival where I don't know that everyone's vaccinated. Yeah, I know, totally. I agree. And <laughs> on top of that, like, it doesn't help, like, one of the, one of the performers... Was wearing was wearing like a black flags matter shirt, which is like, I'm sorry, that's cringe. Dude. That is that is that like is way to undermine like important social movements. And yeah, there were some Cro like some of the former Cro-Mags members had like the worst <laughs> takes on this. And yeah. don't get me wrong, I'm all for concerts and whatnot and reopening and stuff and. We should totally be able to, to do these things, especially if, you know, everyone's vaccinated. But it, there should have been at least some precautions, like masks yeah. or, like, social dis... I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Like, come on, hardcore's better than this, right? I mean, who what who was the band that, like, headlined this? What is this? What was the band? Madball? Madball. All right, hold on. Let's take some, let's take some look, because you know what? I do think hardcore is better than I think hardcore. Hardcore, hardcore generally is a pretty progressive and otherwise um, socially conscious genre. So it's kind of interesting that especially a New York hardcore band would kind of, you know, put this on. Yeah, but, I agree. I don't know. Um, very interesting, I guess. Uh, aside from that, any, 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 anything, anything, uh, anything interesting in the, in the news one bit? Bro, I mean, Fear Factory said they're getting an unknown singer for their new uh, record. I did, I did see that. Um, I mean, dude, other, like, let's be real, the biggest metal album of the year is gonna be Fortitude, and it's gonna be horrible, <laughs> so we should be excited for that, which comes out, like, six hours from when we're yeah. recording this. Um, did you know that... <laughs> that was a nice beef and beef sauce for Did you know did, that did you're you not know? really sitting in the chair? Um, did you know uh, Nine Inch Nails won their second Oscar the other night? For our best score. Did you know, Sam, that uh, Nine Inch Nails, uh, not really, but, you know, Trent, uh, Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross... Uh, directed, or music, like, they were responsible for the soul soundtrack. Yeah, I did, actually. I did not know that one single bit, and I think, <laughs> I think that's hysterical. I mean, it's, like, dude, like, kind of it's kind of funny that Trent is just, like, like, the six-year-old Chad who just gets Oscars every season because he's an amazing composer. It's um, but yeah, I mean, like, Soul's, like, a, an amazing movie. And I haven't seen it yet. I'm, really gonna have to, I'm gonna have to watch it now. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm not surprised that Trent and Atticus pulled up no. another one. No. I Dude, agree. you know what? Sometimes, you know what I think back to? What? I think back to when Nine Inch Nails played a show um, two years ago at the Orpheum in Boston, and it was a 90s show, and they played, like, Every good song off of a fragile, he, um, pretty hate machine, mm -hmm. uh, broken and downward spiral. And I think about how one of my friends, um, who you'd know, and that has gone to shows with us in the past, went to that show because he's a huge Nine Inch Nails fan, and invited me to that. And I was like, "Oh no, I'm good, dude. No, I'm good. I don't want to go see Nine Inch Nails." And I could have seen my guy Trent performing like every. All of my favorite Nin songs. Cool, bruh. Never turn down a free concert. That's the moral of the story. 
No, well, I mean, to be fair, tickets were going to be like 60 bucks. Cause Not true. Because they're huge, but still. Fair enough. Um, I honestly don't have much else. I mean, we have Fortitude cast next week with uh, Fortitude coming out on Friday. Dude, I'm going to be like... <laughs> uh, there might even be a review out. Because we just need to talk about this album a lot. There's gonna, we're gonna have a lot to say, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, I, we're in kind of unique positions because, like, most of the, like, everyone, if you're into metal or heavy music whatsoever, you like Gojira. Gojira are great. They have an amazing discography. They're great for a number of reasons. Everyone likes Gojira. They're one of the few bands that like exists on like the normie level and the elitist level that have come out in the past like 15 years or so, right? Mm-hmm. And I feel like we're in this unique position where not only are we did we get into Gojira at a time where we really couldn't be critical of metal, but we know their discography absurdly well. And now yep. we're in this position where we're you know, kind of like more elitist, which is fine. Yeah. But we're we're like some of the few people who went from being like normie Gojira listeners to elitist Gojira listeners, right? Yeah, we have we have both ends of the objective spectrum. Exactly, I guess. and. I'm, there's, there's like literally no way in hell Fortitude's good, right? No, like, half of these tracks, all these tracks, other than maybe Born for One Thing, are poo poo. They are boring. They are dull. They are unenthused. Uh, and that, I mean, unless like XD, LOL. They remember when Igor dropped all the worst songs on their record for. Spiritual distortion. I remember that. Why? I don't know. But they did that. You know. Well, I, at this uh, point, like literally half the album is out, right? On singles. No, right? seriously. Yeah. So like, there's literally no way. And you know, it's bad because <laughs> already, like, all the the pretty big like, like metal publications are like, Gojira breaks new ground with the new best album of the year. Oh, God. Like, there's just no way this album's good, right? No. Uh, no, I don't think so. Like, the only songs... We, we've we literally heard half this album. And the first three songs are Born for One Thing, Amazonia, and Another World. And then the chant is, like, track seven. So, like, unless... Like, I'm, I'm sorry. In, unless, like, Hold On, New Found, Fortitude... Or sorry, Sphinx, The Trails, and Grind are all just the single best Gojira tracks you've ever heard. This album's going to be horrible. Yeah. It's and just, I look forward to ripping it apart next week. It's... <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, this... It's just so strange. Because you know what? Even with Magma... And we were around when the Magma like album cycle was happening. You know? You mm-hmm. had Silvera. You had... Um, fuck, I, what are the other singles on that fucking... Ray's pretty great. Yeah. Um, Stranded. Yep, Stranded was another single. Just, God, man, I I don't, I don't know. Like, even like, I don't know, man. I felt like with some of these tracks here on Magma, like, and I'm kind of skipping through it now. Like, they really, they really, really went for that, like, tribal vibe, you know, that, like, yeah, kind of permeates... They, like, it kind of permeates all their old music, but, like, it hasn't really been highlighted on. It's like taking all the stuff from, um, yeah, fucking, uh, the way of all flesh. Like, all the weird, wacky, um, Amazon, sort of, South American tribal mm-hmm. influence in their sound and putting it to 11. And, I, I mean, I think they're trying to do that again, but, like, just royally failing because, I don't know, like... It just, it doesn't make any sense. We've talked about how the didgeridoo on fucking Amazonia is, like, the worst thing ever. Um, and I, I don't know, man. I, this, you're right. This record's just gonna, it's just gonna be bad. And you know what? I had a fragment of hope. I really did. When Born for One Thing came out as a second single, I was like, oh, man, all right. One, all right, another world poo-poo song. But you know what? Born for One Thing, kind of a smacker. I'm excited. And then... And one then after every other one single after one and just nothing, nothing of substance. Oh gosh, Do you, we're we're gonna get like Joe Duplantier or Joe Duplantier like adding us on Twitter, like <laughs> you guys suck. I d- dude, look, man, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't think people are gonna like this record, 
and I think Dude, it's are you only, kidding me? Are you it's, kidding? Right, hold me? on, hold on. It's gonna be. It's gonna get popular reception. It's gonna. It's gonna get the Loudwire best album of the year. It's gonna get the Metal Sucks five. It's gonna get the the Metal Injection five. But like, I don't think. I think this is the downward trend of the Go to Europe career. You know they're going to become well, dude, no, dude. The the people that aren't into metal are loving this album. Like, well, no go, shit, yeah. Well, if you go into any of their like YouTube, the YouTube videos for these songs, all the comments are like so heavy. Like, it's the Whoa! best song ever. But, like, even like the more popular like metal YouTubers, like Jared Dines, like Nick Nocturnal, are like commenting on all these videos, like. Go, we don't deserve new Ghost Hero or whatever. We don't deserve the kids. And like, I don't know. I really feel like this album's gonna be pretty successful for everyone, but uh, like everyone, but you know, people like us. I right? don't know, man. I... Jesus, bro. <laughs> POV. You were born for one thing. <laughs> these, wow, man. These really these these YouTube comments just blow up the ass. You're right. I told you, like, the reception is generally positive on this stuff. And not only is it positive, it's like, Gojira are the best band ever existed. Like, music itself has been saved. Like, <laughs> and don't get me wrong. Like, I we own every Gojira CD. We've seen them live. I love Gojira, one of my favorite metal bands. I can play, like, half their songs on guitar. They're sick, right? <laughs> this album is going to suck. Currently oh, got a three point two on a uh, on RYM. Obviously, the album hasn't come out, so that's kind of just your. Well, let, let's uh let's let's curb the the enthusiasm a little bit though, because we're going to be talking about this next week. So. Curb the enthusiasm, Jesus Christ. Um. Yeah. All right. Ugh. I don't know. Nah. Opeth. Opeth to see part nine or whatever. Yeah. This is uh this is their ninth record. So yeah. Um. Join us next week for the Fortitude destruction cast um and uh after that we got a uh, episode 10 Her- heritage heritage which is um, easily the worst no pet right uh we will we're, just, we we're will just gonna be negative we're gonna be negative nancy's for a couple weeks here yeah that's kind of sucky but we'll talk about good music in the beginning segment which is always good y'all yeah, be like i listened to fortitude 12 times uh, fucking literally um Actually, my guy tom brahan from stereo gum said it's a good album so I don't know, man. I don't right, know, I've, man. I've been Sam. I've been Adam. Uh, PM Metal Guide forever. <laughs>